Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and uh, salam sejahtera. Okay, this is the fourth session of my lecture on intangible assets. Okay, now I would like to talk about uh, the research and development. Okay, uh, research and development is uh, a type of internally generated intangibles. Okay, uh, the research and development uh, activities okay uh, are also subject to the same recognition criteria and initial measurement uh, as other intangible assets okay uh, basically research and development can be uh, divided into a research phase and development phase all right what is the meaning of research okay research is defined as original and planned investigation undertaken with the prospect of gaining new scientific or technical knowledge and understanding. All right, uh, the examples of research activities include, okay, activities aimed at obtaining new knowledge, uh, the search for applications of new research findings or other knowledge, okay, the search for or evaluation of product or process alternatives and the formulation and design of possible new or improved product or process alternatives. All right. The question is, can the cost incurred during the research phase, okay, or also known as research expenses, can be recognized as intangible assets? The answer is no. Okay, the cost incurred during the research phase must be written off as expenses in the SOPOL. Why? Okay, because uh, in the research phase, there is no probability that the future economic benefits will flow to the entity. Okay, uh, since the future economic benefits uh, is not probable during the research phase okay so the cost incurred during the research phase okay uh, cannot be capitalized but it must be written off in the sopol all right okay let's have a look at this example i give you two minutes uh, to read the example Okay, the accounting treatment, okay, uh, for the example, okay, Jentayu Berhad should not capitalize research expenditure that has been incurred in 2018 amounted to 7 million or that are expected to be incurred in 2019 amounted to RM 10 million. Okay, MFRS 138, intangible assets states that research costs cannot be capitalized but are written off as expense in a period they are incurred all right so during the research phase future economic benefits are not probable okay so uh, so as uh, as can as we can see from the from this example okay the research cost cannot be capitalized or cannot be recognized as intangible assets eh? because uh, during the research phase okay the future economic benefits okay of the uh, uh, intangibles okay are not probable all right next we have a look at uh, the development phase all right first of all what is the meaning of development activities all right uh, development refers to the application of research findings or other knowledge to a plan or design for the production of new or substantially improved materials, devices, products, processes, system or services prior to the commencement of commercial production or use. Okay, development phase is further advanced than the research phase. Okay, it is an advanced uh, activity compared to the uh, 
uh, research activity. Alright, the examples of uh, this, there's a typo here. Alright, uh, examples of development activities uh, include uh, the design, construction and testing of pre-production or pre-use prototypes and models, design of tools, jigs, moves and dies involving new technologies, uh, the design, construction, Okay, an operation of a pilot plan that is not of a scale economically feasible for commercial production or use. Alright, so how about the cost incurred during the development phase? Can we capitalize or can we recognize the cost as intangible assets? Okay, so according to MFRS 138, the cost incurred during the development phase can be capitalized or can be recognized as intangible asset if they meet all the six capitalization criteria of the research and development. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, so the first criteria is entity has the technical feasibility of completing the intangible asset so that it will be available for use or sale. Second criteria, entity has the intention to complete the intangible asset and use or sell it. Okay, the third criteria, entity has the ability to use or sell the intangible. Okay, the fourth criteria, the intangible asset will generate probable future economic benefits. The entity can demonstrate the existence of a market for the output of the intangible asset or the intangible asset itself or the usefulness of the intangible asset. Alright, the fifth criteria, the entity has adequate technical, financial and other resources to complete the development and to use or sell the intangible asset. And the last criteria, the cost incurred during development can be measured reliably okay so if the cost incurred during uh, sorry the cost incurred during the development phase okay, can be capitalized or recognized as intangible asset if okay uh, the development activities meet all the six capitalization criteria of r and d all right let's have a look at this example okay i give you one minute to read the example Okay, uh, as you can see uh, in this example, okay, the company incurred 200,000 every month, okay, uh, in uh, product Zest, okay, uh, and research was undertaken dur during the first quarter of the year, okay, and the development of the new product began in April 2018. Alright, but only uh, beginning November, the directors were confident of the feasibility and success of the new product. Okay, that means uh, beginning November, okay, uh, uh, it seems that, okay, uh, the, the, okay, the R&D or, or the development activities, okay, have met the uh, recognition or capitalization criteria of R&D. Okay, as at the end of the year, the new product was still under development. Required discuss the accounting treatments of the internally generated intangible assets above. Okay, let's have a look at the accounting treatment. Okay, the research expenditure of 600,000, that is 3 months, okay, times 200,000 incurred during the first quarter of the year is recognized as expense in the SOPOL. Okay, the development expenditure of 1.4 million, that is 7 months times 200,000 incurred from April until October did not meet the capitalization criteria. Therefore, okay, the cost should be recognized as 
and expand in the SOPOL. Okay, so the cost incurred during development phase amounted to 1.5 million here. Okay, uh, did not meet capitalization criteria. So, uh, it should be uh, written off as expenses in the SOPOL. And 400,000 cost incurred beginning November met the capitalization criteria. Okay, thus uh, the cost can be capitalized or recognized as intangible asset in the SOPI and deferred to the next year. Okay, if the cost was not recognized as an asset in the SOPI, okay, it can be deferred to the following year. Alright, uh, alright, this one is about the subsequent measurement of intangible assets. Okay. Uh, actually, the subsequent measurement of intangible asset uh, is the same as uh, MFRS 116 PPE. Okay, there are two models that can be applied by an entity for subsequent measurement. Okay, the first one is the cost model and the second one is the revaluation model. Okay, uh, for 4 to 70, we are going to focus uh, on the cost model only okay the, the revaluation model will be uh, will be covered in detail in file 320 all right okay if uh, an entity uh, opts for the cost model okay the the cost of the intangibles uh, should be carried at uh, uh, sorry the intangible asset should be carried at cost less accumulated amortization less accumulated impairment losses okay uh, so if the company if a company uh, chooses the revaluation model okay uh, the intangible asset okay must be carried at its fair value less accumulated amortization less accumulated impairment losses okay Okay, this one is about intangible asset with finite useful life. Okay, what is the meaning of finite useful life? Okay, uh, that means the useful life of intangible assets can be determined. Okay, uh, so if the useful life of intangible asset can be determined, okay, the intangible asset should be amortized on a systematic, systematic basis over its useful life. Okay. Uh, the amortization begins when asset is available for use and the amortization charge is expense of in the SOPOL. Okay, other than that, okay, uh, the intangible asset should also be tested for impairment okay, uh, uh, every year or when there is an indication that the asset is impaired. Okay, uh, next... Uh, is about the intangible asset with indefinite useful life. Okay, what is the meaning of indefinite useful life? Okay, that means the intangible asset, the useful life of the intangible asset cannot be determined. Okay, cannot be determined. Okay, if the uh, the intangible the useful life of intangible asset okay, is indefinite or cannot be determined, okay. Uh, the intangible asset should not be amortized, okay, but it must be tested for impairment annually and whenever there is an indication that the asset is impaired. All right. Uh, so what is uh, impairment test? Okay, impairment test uh, is done by comparing the carrying amount of the asset with the recoverable amount. Of the asset, okay. Recoverable, recoverable amount refers to the higher of net selling price and value in use. Okay, so basically, if the carrying amount of the asset is higher than uh, its recoverable amount, uh, that means the asset is impact. Therefore, uh, an impairment loss should be recognized in the SOPI. Okay, let's have a look at, uh, I'm sorry, the impairment loss should be recognized in the SOPOL, right? not in SOPI. Okay, um, 
Let's have a look at this example. Okay, intangible asset with finite useful life. Okay. I give you one minute to read this example. Okay, required explain the accounting treatment for the year ended 31st December 2012 and 31st December 2014. Second, prepare the journal entries for the year ending 31st December 2014. Okay, let's have a look at uh, the accounting treatment. Okay, for year ended 31st December 2012 and 2013. Okay, on 1st January, January 2012, the publishing rights shall be treated as intangible asset in accordance with MFRS 138. It meets the definition, the definition and the recognition criteria okay, of intangible asset that is identifiable, control and future economic benefits and is measured at the initial cost of RM 9 million. Okay, since the intangible asset has an identifiable or finite useful life, uh, it should be amortized over 10 years and RM 900,000 is recognized as amortization expense for the year ended 2012 and 2013 in the SOPOL. Alright, uh, so how do you get the amortization expense? Okay, 900,000, you take the cost 9 million divided by the uh, useful life 10 years. Uh, so the amortization expense per year is RM 900,000. Okay, next, okay, uh, the accounting treatment for the year ended 31 December 2014. Okay, on 1st January 2014, the carrying amount of the intangible asset of 7.2 million, that is 9 million minus 1.8 million, uh, because the, uh, the intangible has been amortized for 2 years. Okay, so the total uh, amount the accumulated amortization expense was 1.8 million okay so the carrying amount of the intangible asset 7.2 million okay is higher than the recoverable amount of 6 million okay hence an impairment loss of rm 1.2 million is recognized okay that is a difference between the uh, carrying amount and the recoverable amount okay uh, beginning 2014, the useful life of 3 years would be the amortization period for the intangible asset. So, the amortization expense for 2014 and onwards will be RM 2 million per year. That is 6 million, okay, the, the, the recoverable amount, okay, the new recoverable amount, okay, divided by uh, 3 years, okay, the, the remaining useful life of the intangible was 3 years. Okay, so we get the amortization expense RM uh, 2 million for 2014 and onwards. Okay, uh, this is the calculation for uh, the impairment losses. Okay, the initial cost of the intangible asset is RM 9 million. Okay, minus the accumulated amortization 1.8 million. So the carrying amount is uh, 7.2 million and when we compare with the recoverable amount okay uh, it was 6 million okay so the as the carrying amount was higher than the recoverable amount uh, the asset is impact okay so we have to recognize an impairment loss Okay, amounted to 1.2 million. Okay, that is 7.2 million minus 6 million. Okay, the new carrying amount as at 1st January 2014 is 6 million. Okay, uh, so this is the, the, recoverable, the recoverable amount. Okay, 
Okay, and minus the amortization charge for the year ended 31 December 2014, uh, 2 million. Okay, so we get the carrying amount as at 31 December 2014 is 4 million. Okay, so this is the journal entries. Okay, for uh, this example, intangible asset with finite useful life. Okay, for year ended 31 December 2014. We have to debit, okay, so for impairment loss RM 1.2 million, credit in accumulated impairment loss 1.2 million, okay, uh, debit so for amortization expense, okay, this is the new uh, amortization charge, okay, RM 2 million and credit accumulated amortization RM 2 million. Okay, uh, and the last one is about disclosure, okay, of the intangible assets in the financial statements. I think uh, for this one, you can read uh, by yourself. Okay, the most important thing, you need to know how to disclose, okay, the information regarding the um, uh, the carrying amount, okay, the, the carrying amount of the intangible assets in the SOPI. Uh, how to uh, recognize, okay, uh, how to recognize the amortization expense in the SOPOL, okay, and how to uh, recognize the, uh, uh, the, the, the R&D, okay, the one that, uh, the one that should be recognized as intangible asset and the one that should be written off as expenses in the SOPOL. Okay, so I guess uh, that's all about, okay, for the topic of intangible as that, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.